Hey everyone, so we've done tons of time series on this channel, we've done tons of Bayesian analysis, so you knew this was coming. Just a matter of time until we do Bayesian time series, which is the focus of this video. Let's just dive right into it. So we're going to start by simulating an AR2, an autoregressive 2 process, with the following parameters. So the coefficient on the first lag, which is called phi1, or true phi1, is going to be negative 0.2. The coefficient on the second lag is going to be 0.5. And the true sigma, or the standard deviation of the errors that we add to each of the time periods, is 0.1. And so we generate a process according to those parameters, and it looks something like this. So now the usual thing we would do is that we would just fit an AR model. So let's say we figure out that this should be an AR2 model, and so we go ahead and just call ARIMA with AR2 and the other stuff is 0. So we're basically just fitting an AR2 model here, and we get the output that looks like this. So let's pause for a second and analyze this. We see that the estimated coefficient on the first lag is negative 0.22, which is pretty close to the negative 0.2. The estimated parameter of the second lag is 0.4975, which is really close to the true value of 0.5. And the last quantity is the standard deviation of the innovations is 0.099, which is really close to the 0.1. So we say we're doing a pretty good job. Why do any further analysis? Well, the answer is that these are just point estimates. And even if we look at these, for example, these confidence intervals here, which give us a little bit of information about your true parameters could be within this range, that does kind of move away from the point estimates a little bit, but we still stop very short of getting a full distribution of values for these three parameters, which is something we really, really, really like to get in statistics. And so that is the reason we're going to move towards a Bayesian analysis. But before we do that, let's do a little bit of forecasting so we can compare the forecasting here to the forecasting we do with the Bayesian analysis. So the first thing I do is I get the fitted values on the existing time series. So this blue curve is the existing time series. The orange curve is the fitted values from that model. You can see it fits reasonably close. If we do some forecasting five periods out, then we get this green line here. And this shaded area is the confidence interval of that forecast. Now we switch over to the Bayesian analysis using the very popular library, PyMC3. So we had a whole video on PyMC3, which I'll link below, but you don't necessarily have to watch that to understand this. All you need to know is a little bit about Bayesian stats, and so we're going to start with our priors. So since we have three parameters, we're going to have three priors, and we're going to keep the priors relatively flat or uninformed. Um, in other words, we're going to have them have pretty big standard deviations because we're, that basically encodes this assumption that I don't really know what the values of these parameters should be beforehand, so I'm going to kind of keep it open. And so phi1 and phi2, we're going to have normal distributions with mean 0 and pretty big standard deviation 20, and sigma will be exponentially distributed with lambda equals 1. The likelihood function is what's the probability of observing this data, given some setting of the parameters, and given the values of the last two uh, values in the time series, and according to the autoregressive process, this would be normally distributed with mean phi1 times xt minus 1 plus phi2 times xt minus 2 and standard deviation sigma. Okay? And so then we come to the most important quantity in Bayesian stats, which is the posterior, which asks the reverse question. And it says that given that I observe this entire time series, what is the distribution of these three parameters phi1, phi2, and sigma? I want to build up distributions for them so I can do things like sample from them, take the average of the distribution, all of these fun things that I can't do with just point estimates. And so here's the code, really simple, with pm.model, pm being the alias I gave to pymc3 above as Bayes model. We specify the priors here. The reason there's only two priors is because I kind of stuff both of the phi values into this single variable and say shape equals two. So that says there's two phi values inside there. Uh, the pymc3 has a built-in autoregressive function, so it takes a lot of work off of our hands. So we call that, we put in the priors, and we put in the observed values of the time series. And then we simply just say, now sample from the posterior distribution of these three parameters here. Give me a thousand samples, and cores equals two just says I want to do two independent runs of a thousand samples. And so the result is these plots below. Um, I've kind of just generated my own plots so that we could see a little bit more information on each one. And so the first one is the distribution of phi1. So now you see we have a whole distribution of values for phi1. The posterior mean or the average of all these samples is negative 0.209, which is even closer to the true value of negative 0.2 than we got from that point estimate above. And furthermore, we have this whole distribution, which is great. 
the phi2 posterior distribution mean is 0.52, pretty close to the um, 0.5 true value, which is in this black line here. And the sigma posterior distribution uh, posterior mean is 0.106, which is very, very close to the true value of 0.1. So now if we forecast the next values using this Bayesian method, basically what this function above, this uh, code above does is basically just simulates picking parameters from these distributions. And for each triple of chosen parameters, we basically just say that's the truth, and then we forecast the next five values based on that. We do that process many, many, many times, and we get the following forecast distributions. So now we have not just a single point estimate for your forecast for the next time period, but we have a whole distribution of values. So you can see that here we have a lot of information. Let's talk about this one. This is the forecasted next time period. The posterior mean of this distribution is negative 0.003. The maximum likelihood estimate or the forecasted value from above was 0.001. So they're pretty close to each other. Uh, the standard deviation of the Bayes is 0.108. The standard deviation of the maximum likelihood estimate was 0.099. So I, I put all these values here because I wanted to hit the point home that the average value of this distribution and the MLE estimate above aren't going to be too far off usually. It's just the Bayes method gives us access to this entire distribution, as I've been saying way too many times. We have the forecasted t plus 2, forecasted t plus 3, and so on and so on and so on. And so you can see here that the standard deviation of the Bayes or the standard deviation of these samples gets bigger as we forecast further and further. And the reason is that with time series, as you forecast further into the future, your error is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger because you're less certain about those values. So this is kind of just an introduction, but also a little bit of a deep dive into Bayesian statistics for time series. How do you use this kind of Bayesian posterior analysis um, to do time series analysis? And this PyMC3 library is a really good friend here. So if you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments below. Um, if you like this video, please like and subscribe for more just like this. And see you next time.